Update 5.1 is live in World of Tanks Blitz and it caused a storm of critique when the open test server was available. It was widely regarded and hailed as the worst update ever. But is this true? Let's find out in today's video. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen tankers of Blitz Universe. My name is Martin Dogger and I'll be talking you through update 5.1 in this video. Up first the buffs. The T-34-2 has been buffed as you can see mostly in its frontal protection. Same goes for the premium T-Ray T-34-3, frontal turret armor reinforced and the hatches as well. The WZ-110, the tier 8 Chinese heavy tank, gets a small nerf in terms of hit points and loses some DPM on the top gun. And the LTTB gets a significant nerf uh, in terms of its frontal armor protection, uh, but yeah, that one is quite justified, I think. There are two new attachments available, as you can see, 4000 gold for a fire extinguisher for French tier 10 tanks and a searchlight for tier 10 American tanks. Big money, little result. So into the main thing for bit 5.1 now, easier life for rookies. Wargaming are working really hard thinking about a lot of options to make the life for new players a bit easier. Um, World of Tanks Blitz is a complicated game. It doesn't seem that complicated at first, but it actually really is. And one of the things they proposed was shown in update in the open test for update 5.1, which wasn't really open test. 5.1 it was just an open test it was not a preview and the fact that they show that change in tech trees caused a giant uproar in the community and people were saying right I will quit blitz if this is going to happen um, changes are not finalized yet wargaming are still thinking about it but I have asked them is there a chance the tech tree will stay as it is now the answer was not a flat out no but yeah, it's a really slim margin, a really slim, slim chance of the tech tree staying as it is. So don't count on it. There will be changes in the future. So what I decided to do uh, for 5.1, because there have been changes as well in the tutorial, in consumables provisions, we'll get to that later. Um, I decided to go in and um, do the tutorial again. And what I liked at the beginning, and I don't think it was there when I actually started in 2014, was the description of the tanks. There are a few things lacking as well and this is the main thing for me. You can see I have to complete four courses to do some basic training, I get to the first tank, I have to destroy him, but I also get that light bulb. I'm spotted, I know that, I've been playing the game. Um, but nothing else is shown and once you've destroyed that MS1 you go straight into this area where you get to use sniper mode and have to shoot at a Panzer 2. But again, that, that's the only thing that is really shown. In this mode, the most heavily armored parts are highlighted. Yes, they are highlighted in red. Um, I have to flag now, which I'm going to do. But even in this shooting range bit, there is no indication or any explanation about the reticule, about aiming, about how the two small triangles have to uh, align for your shots to hit. And I think those are key features that really need to be implemented in the tutorial before players get into the next game. But before I sound like a really grumpy guy, I mean the tutorial, in it's better than when it was when I first started. There are less options you can do. I, can, I can't do anything but research the new turret. I get a bit of gold, and then uh, I get this. An explanation a more powerful gun can be mounted in this new turret so I have to improve the gun I have to get the XP all well and good we are going into a battle and this one is actually the first live battle or not, not really live battle but this is this is the first battle I'm doing against new players um, nothing yet has been said to me about the minimap there's no explanation on the spotting mechanics I know, because I've played the game already, is that when I'm spotted, everybody on the red team can see me. Those tanks are spotted. Am I spotting them? Are my teammates spotting them? Um, there's a tank over there. Can he see me? Can he shoot me? Yes, he might be able to do so. There is that very large reticule uh, um, shown in the screen. It's shrinking down, but what does that mean? Is it beneficial for me to let it shrink down completely? I'm not going to uh, bore you with the complete battle, but you can see 
In just about 1 minute and 30 seconds, the battle is done. If I was a new player, a really new player, I think I wouldn't have learned anything. Or maybe just that the battles go very quickly. And that it is really good to just drive forward, shoot as quickly as possible. And then win. But we all know that Blitz is a quick game, but just blasting in there is not really going to work. For this first win I get two days of premium account, so I have 350 uh, XP now. But I can already see that I get some gold, I have credits, I have XP. Uh, what do I do with it? Improve the gun, lovely stuff. You can see it's an autoloader. No explanation yet whatsoever. So there are some very basic things missing in the tutorial at the moment. And if Wargaming really will rework the tech tree, and I have no doubt that they will, they will rework it. I hope, I really hope it's not to the degree that is, uh, was shown in Open Test 5.1, but there will be a rework, period. Just how shape and form that's all to be decided yet. But if they are going to make that rework, and if they are going to change things to the game to make life easier for rookies, then they have to do something about teaching them how to play. I mean, I've done in a tutorial that game against the MS-1, driving around, very, very basic driving. There's no way, if I'm a new player, that I have, am already capable of driving a tank now I think. This one was even quicker, it was a 5 versus 5. Why, was it, why is it a first fi 5 versus 5? It was a 7 versus 7 in the last one. And within again 1 minute and uh, 30 seconds the game is done. My team hasn't learned anything, Reds haven't learned anything and uh, here are the results. Zero damage but I get 4k of credits. How do I deserve that? Uh, don't know. I've used a new gun in battle, 1500 uh, credits earned uh, again. Right and now here's the the big thing for me, I have to research and purchase a tier 2 tank. Um, I have to get the necessary XP again in battle, which we are going to do, obviously. And when you've done that battle, and this one's going to be a very quick one as well, then you have researched a tier 2 vehicle. If Wargaming are changing the tech trees and they are not explaining things like spotting, uh, like ammo, like using cover for example, uh, then it's not going to work. You can't make the game easy for new players by just removing bits and gradually introducing them to them. Because you can see I have no consumables available. That's not available for tier 1 vehicles, but those slots are there. That's uh, all good. I can understand it's in the user interface. You can't just um, put that away if you, um, if you make the game. You can't just remove those uh, slots because the same user interface is used for a tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 vehicle as well. Um, but still, it, it won't make the game easier. I know an autoloader. I know how it works. But when I started the game, I looked at the statistics of the tanks and I was thinking, right, if I have this tank, the MS-1 or the low tractor or whatever type of tank there was with a single shotgun, I noticed that every gun had bigger damage per shot, if it was a single shotgun, than the autoloader guns. I didn't know it was about burst damage. I didn't know that you could shoot four shells, six shells, uh, nine shells within uh, one clip to do the damage. I didn't know you had to maximize that. I wasn't told so. Um, so now I can go into uh, my tech tree again and I can research the T26, which I'm going to do obviously. But yeah, it, it is, it, it, it is, it goes too quick. Even this tutorial, even if it is a little bit longer and more streamlined as in having less options. Uh, yeah, look at this, all your vehicles are controlled by a unified crew, right, there is 50% now. Improve the crew mastery in regimental school. This is a funny one as well, because um, they're teaching you the higher the level of the crew, the better the, cor the characteristics of the vehicle, which is good. Right, I have to train the crew now for 12,500 credits, and I get 20. 
I get 20k in return. Lovely, 7,500 credits won by just training my crew. Right, that's really going to help if I have new vehicles at tier 3 and 4 and 5, 6 and 7 and 8. If I train my crew, I get credits. No, you don't. They cost you credits. It's just a re reward in the tutorial. But I can really understand why new players would think, right, every every time I get, <laughs> get a crew and I train it, I get credits. I get rewarded for it. Um, and this one is actually the first battle I'm going to drive in a uh, live battle. And you can see it's for the spare. Um, there are two tier 1 vehicles in my list. I think that a fair lot of the tanks um, available now on both teams are new players. Because it is my first battle uh, as a real uh, in, in a real battle, I decided to uh, go in here and, and uh, make sure I had my lookout area available and the second fire button available. And I did check my range finder and reload timer; they, those were available, all really well and good. Um, but here we go; it's four to spare. But just look at the size of it. <laughs> just look at the size of the map. Where do I have to go? Right, I'll just sort of lemming train then and I'll uh, follow my teammates. But the red T2 medium is going to pop up on the map and we're going to shoot him in the butt. So and while we let this battle unfold, um, let's take a quick look at other things that have been changed in 5.1. Because yeah, there have been other changes which are good. Um, I've talked about the buffs and the nerfs, about the new attachments. Um, but Wargaming have also done something about the mastery badges. You can now see how many mastery badges you have uh, got on a vehicle. If you have mastered a tank already, it shows as one uh, when you start a new game in 5.1. If you master it again, it will show up as a second one and then a third one, etc, etc. Really good stuff. There are major and minor improvements as well. All the spare parts are gone now. Um, they have made a change in the matchmaking that there should be no more than three vehicles of a certain type in the team. And that means if there are two tanks on a team, then the enemy team can have one, two or three uh, of the same type. But there's a bit of a catch, which is uh, slightly annoying, I think, because there have to be more than 8,000 vehicles in the queue and they have to be of tier 5 and above. So, yeah, if you have a small queue, especially playing at night or on the Asian server, good luck, that matchmaker thingy is not <laughs> going to work. Um, other changes, uh, some bits to the attachments on the IS-3, the multi-purpose restoration pack, and that's a good thing actually, it will be automatically installed on all new vehicles in the garage if you purchase a new one, and I think that's good. Um, but other bits, yeah, it's, it's just really, really small thing. It's better screen results was added to the replays and that's really good uh, for me if I want to use a replay. And some changes to Malinovka, False Creek and Alton Start. Uh, yeah, there's a link description, uh, link available in the description below on all the changes. It takes you to the news portal. Uh, you can just take the time there and read all uh, upon it. Um, but yeah, the basic things are the buffs and nerfs. The buffs to the T34-2, T34-3 and the nerf to the LTTB and the WZ110. Right, back to the easier life for rookies. Uh, this battle, as you can see, was a fairly quick one. And this was my first battle. I've, I've done this before, actually, when I made my Asian account, <laughs> which I managed to ace the T26, bone stock, no consumables, no provisions available, no uh, premium ammo, I just had the standard ammo available, and an autoloader gun, but I managed to ace it with a top gun. And I'm going to complete my training here by going into the tech tree, selecting another nation and purchasing uh, another tank. I'm going to uh, get the T1, the T1 Cunningham. This one is good, initial tier vehicles, then you get uh, a bit of explanation on the light, on the medium tanks, the heavy tanks and the tank destroyers. And now I have to select the tier 1 vehicle and buy it. And there we go, I have to go to the, ta to the tank and when I do that, I've completed basic training. And that's all. That's all there is. You can see there's a multi-purpose restoration pack straight away. Um, I get some ammo because it is a tier 1 which is uh, new. But if you look at the XP I've earned already on the T26, that's enough to 
get myself a new gun and a new turret. And if this was an X5 weekend, then I think I would have had enough to buy the new turret, to buy the new gun, and also to research and maybe even buy the T46. That's not good. Then I go back into the garage and I get an explanation about regular and rating battles. Why? I can't do ratings unless I'm at tier 8, but by just showing this, it kind of makes it an incentive, at least in my opinion, for new players. Right, regular or rating? Rating sounds really cool. Oh, I have to get a tier 8 as quickly as possible. How can I get a tier 8 vehicle? Yeah, you can get them from the store or just go up to tiers as quickly as possible. So all these changes they are making here, and this is a a still image from the news. This is all well and good. Limit the options for new players and for all players alike. So it becomes easier to play in um, in lower tiers in a way. But if they are not going to change anything at all to um, the way they are teaching new players to play, then this will all be yeah, just dust in the wind. It, it will be something that is in the update. And I think it is a good update. Not too much in terms of balance changes, buffs and nerfs, just a little bit. Enough data on the new Chinese vehicles uh, to balance them out. Um, but this, if you're a new player again, uh, I'm going to buy all that equipment uh, as much as I can. You can see if I want to, I could go straight into buying the top line and also the second line. And I was actually thinking, right, what, weren't they going to change anything to that? No, apparently they haven't already. Uh, new players might not be able to buy all this equipment. You could convert it for gold. I'm not going to do that now. But there will be veteran players, SEAL clubbers, who have a fully loaded T26 or Kenny Otsu or whatever type of tank, of tank with full equipment on. And they're going to whack straight into little seals newbies <laughs> so it's not going to make life a lot easier if you face fully equipped tier 2 or 3 tanks from veteran players and the key things I'm missing and what I want to suggest to Wargaming straight away and please leave a comment below if you agree with me this is one thing that really should be added in the gunnery training gun depression that line in sniper mode shows you the maximum angle of gun depression you can take with your tank I mean, if you are in um, what is it in arcade mode, you can lock on to the vehicle. It does seem like you can shoot it, but you, you actually can't. And you only notice that if you go into sniper mode. One, maybe, maybe it's a bit of an open door. Oh well, no, it is an open door. But I think there could be something added about the tanks in terms of driving around. Going down a hill makes you go faster. Going up a hill makes you go slower. You are very vulnerable if you go up a hill because you can't shoot the enemy while they can shoot you. And you might be go might be able to go up up onto the one slope, but the, the other slope on the other side of the canyon isn't available. So yeah, they could add things like that as well. And I think they actually should because it affects the game big time i've seen a lot of players driving into buildings thinking right i can go through these fences and they will slow me down a bit which is not mentioned in the tutorial but i can knock down trees i can knock down these little walls right let's let's see what i can knock down as well I think they should mention something about it, that if you drive across walls and boxes and fences that you will slow down. And if you drive across a lot of walls uh, straight away, like this one, one, I'm actually moving forward as you can see, but the walls are really slowing me down. Right, can I bump into the building then? Yes, of course I can, but it doesn't get destroyed. Yeah, there are a few sheds that can get destroyed, but these are really good brick buildings, nice quality. Uh, I can't knock them down. I think Wargaming should mention things like that as well. So, that's my main <laughs> gripe at the moment and my main uh, whining session done. All in all, I think this is a pretty solid update. I think Wargaming are making some really good steps into making um, the game more enjoyable for new players. And if they can catch a lot of new players in the game and keep them in game, yeah, then I think 
it's all beneficial for everybody because more players means a bigger player pool but the education of new players really has to be yeah it, 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 it needs some adding to um, please leave a comment below if you agree with me if you have ideas on how to change the game to for the better and i'll catch you all on the next one ladies and gentlemen tankers of the universe cheers and happy tanking